Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated our time-lapse video for us to take a look at. Uh, the past few months I've just been posting regular time-lapses of my work, um, but every now and then I do check in with a uh, narration and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I figured I'd check in with a narrated time-lapse uh, before the end of the year because 2023 is almost over and I figured, hey, why not just do one more narration for this year? And so here I am narrating this particular artwork that I did for a monthly challenge in the Create Artist website. So yeah, createartist.com is a great site, a great resource for credit artists as well as general artists or artists in general so yeah um if you'd like to be inspired do check out the website so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and just get started with um narrating what's going on in uh the video right now uh right now we're taking a look at me doing a 3d mock-up of the scene in blender uh, i always love doing this uh I've mentioned this a few times before in my videos. I all, almost always make a 3D mock-up of a lot of my illustrations simply because A, it helps me with perspective and B, it helps me with my lighting. Um, especially in this particular scenario, um, this is an interior scene predominantly lit by bounce light. Uh, there's a sunlight coming through a window of some sort. Um, and the rest of the scene is basically just lit by bounce light so uh, i love scenes like this i always almost always love doing illustrations such as these um i just love painting like bounce light scenes just because it's super complicated uh and super hard to try and figure out where light is gonna go um but it looks nice if done if done very very well you know um so this is part of the reason why I chose this particular illustration to um, make a narration of simply because uh, it's a sunlit interior scene uh, predominantly lit by bounce light. So yeah, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, but before I go on with like the whole bounce light thing, I'd like to really mention out like one of the, uh, the sketches going on right now. Uh, I have symmetry turned on and I think that this is such a cool feature that you'll find in some digital painting softwares that you mostly won't find um, actually you won't find it at all in traditional art media uh, the closest thing that you can have to having like a symmetry option is obviously like drawing with a mirror or painting with a mirror um, and then of course there's other techniques that you could use with rulers and whatnot to help you draw symmetrically um, but there's no mirror option like there's no straight up symmetry mirror option that you could turn on in real life because <laughs> there's just no such thing but digitally there is and I, I thought that this is such a cool feature in in digital painting software because i mean half of my sketch was you know done half the time you know i'm only just drawing on one part of the image and then it just gets reflected automatically on the other side and so really it cuts my drawing time in half you know so i i think this is such a cool feature and wow dude i love i really love this baroque ornate uh drawing that i just did on the chair uh, i thought that was very very cool so yeah but anyways going back to the bounce light and whatnot i really love interior scenes like this i about to post another image as well that i did for atom hawk uh adam hawk always does this competition around june july or july and august of every year and the one i did last year was also like the same scenario it's a sunlit scene an interior sunlit scene and it has bounce light all over the scene and i just love it uh, i just thought it was just really cool so yeah uh, i just love scenes like this it kind of had has a romantic feel to it almost you know um reminds me a lot of makoto shinkai's artwork uh 
Makoto Shinkai is a really, really good anime director. And if anyone has seen his movies, it's so gorgeous. It's super, super gorgeous. Um, Hayao Miyazaki was always my favorite director because his artwork is super gorgeous too. But then Makoto Shinkai just came along and I was like, wow, man. I was just really blown away by some of his um anime scenes is just super gorgeous but yeah sunlit interior sunlit scenes typically reminds me of makoto shankai he's he's really good with the whole interior sunlit scenes so yeah but anyways uh now that i've gone off tangent let's go back to the illustration and talk real quick about the idea the impetus and the prompt and whatnot so um again as i've mentioned earlier uh this was done for a monthly challenge in the creative artist website and the challenge for that month was to draw something cute now eventually i did not enter the challenge simply because um i didn't enter the challenge because uh i did this wrong <laughs> i did the prompt wrong the prompt was to draw something cute and when I first read the prompt, I just glanced through it. I didn't fully read it. And I thought that the rule stated that we're not supposed to draw anything human or any person, basically. And I was just like, okay, well, that's easy enough. I could draw something cute that's not human. Let's draw an animal. Uh, so I decided to draw a turtle, right? Thinking that, oh, that's kind of cute, you know? Let's give him a crown. Let's make him royal looking. That would be even cuter yet. Uh, and then finally when I was ready to submit this image. Or either when I was ready to submit the image. Or maybe I'm halfway through finishing this. I, I can't remember when I found out. But basically either halfway through or almost the end of this illustration. I found out that I misread the prompt. The, the prompt basically stated that we're not allowed to draw any person nor animals um which kind of makes sense because typically when you have a prompt such as you know draw something cute or look at something cute or any anything that denotes cute the first two things that most people would think about is a babies you know human babies they're cute or pet animals um so it, it was pretty obvious you know when it's pretty obvious that you know in order to do something cute or let me backtrack it's not so much as it's obvious the challenge was to draw something cute without doing any of those things because doing human babies and pet animals like i mentioned is the most obvious thing to do when you're given the prompt of doing something cute <laughs> Uh, you know, it just your brain just automatically goes to that. So that really was the challenge was to draw something cute without having to settle for the two obvious things. Um, that's what made it more challenging, obviously. And so when I found out that that was the case for this particular prompt, I just knew I'm like, oh, man, I failed the prompt because I defaulted into the animal. Uh, scenario where it's like I'm gonna draw animals because this cute and I'm like oh man I, I just read it wrong so eventually I didn't end up submitting this image uh, as part of the challenge just because I, I was really off on it um, but I decided to just finish it because I, I knew that the way the scene was developing that is going to be one of my favorites um, I've just gotten really, really good at getting a good feel of images. You know, sometimes I'd work in an image and I knew that it's not going to be very good. You know, the execution on it was really bad or I was really struggling with one component of it that it, I knew it wasn't going to turn out right. Like right now I'm doing a challenge for Hewan, um monthly challenge and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to finish the image or not. But in this particular image, I know that I already messed up with the satura saturation levels of, of the colors. And so I know that eventually, by the time I finish the image, it's not going to be one of my favorites at all. Because I can already tell halfway through that I'm just like, yeah, this isn't turning out too good. But, you know, for the sake of finishing it, I'm just going to go ahead and just finish the image just because I want to. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of images I work on where I'm just like, eh, this is all right. It's not 
working out good but you know then there's those images where i work on it and i'm just super super excited about how it turns out or yeah just really super excited about finding out how it turns out and this is one of those images i could just tell when i was working on this that i'm just i'm just gonna love it it's gonna be one of my favorite images and lo and behold when i finish it is one of my favorite images i just thought that the scene was really cool um it has a lot of uh technical aspects to it that i thought was super cool to execute uh, one of the most technical aspects is like the wood panels for example when i first originally pictured this in my head i didn't plan on doing those wood panels at all but um or i didn't plan for it to be that way anyways but then when i use a textured image from textures.com you know i was inspired by it then i ended up um, changing my design to what it is now which was so cool to paint like when like this part right here when me detailing this wood panels it was just so much fun i don't know why i find that just very relaxing but yeah i really had a lot of fun detailing those wood panels um so yeah that was very very technical the chair the throne that the royal turtle is sitting on um as well that is super challenging slash super cool uh, i love all the symmetry on it uh, as i've mentioned uh, i love baroque design i've always been in love with rococo design so um drawing that was super super cool the other features about this illustration that i thought was super cool was marble um i didn't expect to do a marble stand i guess is what you would call that uh, I, I know there's a specific term for the steps or for what or for the platform that a throne sits on it's like d-a-i-s or something I, I i'm not really sure what the specific term is days dice is that is that the right architecture term i'm not sure but i know there's a term for those steps that the throne is sitting on um anyways uh i didn't expect for that to be a marble uh I, I didn't really know what i had in my mind but you know halfway through drawing or through the illustration i was just like hey let's make this marble so i ended up using a marble texture from textures.com again and then and then obviously when i smudged it it, it got all the details got lost but i love it so much that i know i could bring back the details again when if uh with the generic brushes that is part of the uh Krita brushes you know it's like one of the standard textured brushes that you could find on Krita. so i knew that i was going to be able to recreate that marble look just using the brushes from Krita. um so i love that feature uh semi-accidental wasn't really planning on the marble uh as well as the wood panels in the back but i thought that was pretty cool how i executed that the other feature that i absolutely love in this illustration that i didn't really think about until i was halfway through was the was the reflection that i did on the marble which um this was like one of the last steps that i did uh towards the end of the illustration I basically uh, repainted slash copied and pasted the illustration onto the marble and then kind of just lowered the transparency so you could see that there was the whole scene is being reflected back on the floor so I thought that was super super cool I love the execution of the gold uh, I don't know what's the word for it like the the banner has some gold in it as well as the clothing on the floor uh, i'm not sure what that what that term for the clothing that you lay out on the floor is um but the edges of it has uh this gold like like what i'm working on right now uh i'm working on the banner um but yeah the gold on the banner uh i thought that was done well executed very well it, it looks goldish um gold is always really really hard to paint in all honesty it almost always comes out just yellow looking or too red looking uh 
in this case it wasn't so bad um it, it came out really yeah goldish looking and not very yellow so I, I thought that was very very cool um that was very well executed wow <laughs> i'm like watching this and i'm like really enthralled just watching it i think it was so much fun doing that and then yeah now i'm about to start detailing the throne which is really where you could really see a lot of the bounce light going on um so this was probably the most fun detail and you know i take it back i really really had fun detailing those those wood panels in the back i thought that was the most fun i had in this illustration and then followed closely by doing the baroque um, design on the throne i thought that was pretty much fun too so yeah but yeah uh i'm just gonna take a seat back and just watch the video for now while i detail the rest of the throne and then i'll just come back towards the end of the video like i normally do when i narrate uh and then i'll just give my final thoughts on the the illustration so yeah enjoy the show for now
all right so this this video is almost over um, I'm basically just wrapping up uh, the detailing on the throne and then eventually I'm gonna start doing uh, the reflection uh, that's gonna be like the very very last thing that I do in this illustration so yeah um, so yeah, as part of my process when with doing this narration time lapses, I always try to do a wrap up towards the end of the video, just to kind of get my thoughts on the illustration and whatnot, and basically just repeat some of the things that I mentioned. Uh, so for this illustration, I just again as I mentioned, I really love interior scenes that's lit predominantly by bounce light. Uh, I just love the look on it. And again, this whole scene was all pretty much lit by bounce light. Um, all the part on the left side is all lit by bounce light. So I thought that was nicely executed. Uh, I've been getting a lot of practice on that anyway. So, you know, I kind of know what to do in that regards. Um, I absolutely love the green turtle. Uh, I thought that he is such a good contrast to the image. The image is predominantly um, brown and reds uh, and some yellows uh, and then a lot of pink actually. So I thought that that was really cool and oh wow yeah uh, I'm looking at me detailing that crown and I kind of like how I did that crown. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, the green turtle is absolutely a nice contrast to the rest of the scene. He is obviously very, very obvious because he's green and everything else is warm. So that cool color touch to image is really, really cool. I think he's absolutely cute. He's got a smile going on. So I thought that's pretty neat. Um, I don't really draw turtles that much so I, I thought that my execution in this particular turtle was really cool so yeah uh, again I love the reflections uh, and I just love the details the the Baroque and and the wood panels I mean as I mentioned before those were just so cool to paint so yeah and then the gold I thought was very well executed uh, it's always fun to practice how to paint gold. I don't paint gold enough. Uh, again, it's one of the trickiest thing to paint uh, generally because it's not. It's gold is just like a cross between orange, yellow, and and red. And so, like executing it properly, you know, is really really difficult because either you'll end up with something that looks like either just yellow or either it looks just red or it looks just orange <laughs> it doesn't really look gold so it is super super tricky to do and so um making it look really gold is always like such a cool little thing to happen so yeah and then here i am doing the reflection so i'm copying and pasting um the scene uh onto a layer and then I'm going to put that in or I'm going to turn down the opacity on those things. And then, yeah, it's going to end up looking like it's reflected. It's a very, very subtle effect. Like most people don't wouldn't even pick up on it until I mention it. So, yeah. But yeah, this is almost the end of the scene. Um, I'm really, really happy how it turned out. So. Anyways, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you guys. Uh, before this video ends, I really just wanted to mention that. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Uh, and so yeah, you guys have a great end of the year. Uh, I'll see you guys next year. Good night.